The Oxford English Dictionary defines honoris causa as in order to honor a person mentioned, now used chiefly as a description of such university degrees as are conferred upon persons in recognition of certain distinctions or achievements without the customary examination or thesis. No exam, no thesis. Just this brief commentary, it's not bad. Now I see before me the Faculty of Applied Science and Engineering. I'm thrilled to be a graduate of this school. A bachelor's degree in NSCI followed by a master's and PhD in extractive metallurgy, or as I like to think of it, applied in organic chemistry. At the time, I didn't fully recognize the quality of my education. I now have a deep appreciation for what I learned here at Toronto. Not just in the classroom, not just in the laboratory. I had role models, people whom I wanted to emulate, not just professionally, but also in style and in conduct. U of T had become what then President Claude Bissell called a community of scholars. What is an education? Benjamin Franklin is reputed to have said that education is what remains when you've forgotten all your schooling. A great, good education teaches solutions to problems. A better education teaches methodology for developing solutions to problems. A great education teaches methodology for developing methodologies. And that's what we all got here. Knowledge spanning breadth and depth. Transferable skills. I've kept that with me throughout my academic career, always striving to maximize human potential, inventing inventors. You know, the Oxford English Dictionary defines engineer as one who contrives, designs, or invents. The words engineer and ingenious have the same root. Theodore von Karman made the distinction, a scientist discovers that which exists. An engineer creates that which never was. I call the engineer the steward of the Earth's resources. In a highly interconnected world with growing constraints, it's never been more important to have an engineering education. Let me cap yours with two short lectures. Yes, lectures. First lecture topic, chemical bonding. As you were no doubt taught, there are four types of primary bonds, covalent, ionic, metallic, and van der Waals. Well, I'm here to tell you that there's a fifth type of bond. It has a special property that it can never be broken. It's the type of bond that's been forming over time between people in this hall. Second lecture topic, metallurgy. We all know the golden rule. Treat others as you would hope to be treated yourself. This is a noble ethic, hence reference to the noble metal, but nevertheless rooted in reciprocity. At some level, this behavior is governed by the expectation that one is paying forward in expectation, uh, in anticipation of what uh, might come in return on this investment. So I say to you today, let's abandon the golden rule in favor of the platinum rule. Treat others better than you would expect to be treated yourself. Leave the place better than the way you found it. Invent a process that not only does no harm to the environment, but improves the environment. Imagine a process that produces metal in such a way that the trees are greener in the vicinity of the smelter that the water is purer downstream from the smelter. Imagine, that's the platinum rule. End of lectures. Now I was asked to give you some advice, two points. First, find your passion and pursue it. Don't live life beige, make it full spectrum, extending beyond the visible, from subsonic to hard x-ray. No brake pedal, no rear view mirror. Find someone to pay you to do what you love. 
you'll retire saying you never worked a day in your life. There is no motivation like self-motivation. And secondly, aim high. Ask yourself, what are the big problems? What am I doing about them? Engineering is science in service to society. Consider especially those who are less fortunate than we are. You know, for two out of seven people on the planet, in the words of Saul Alinsky, the question is not, is there life after death, but rather, is there life after birth? Strive for the maximum ripple effect. As they said on the barricades in Paris, 1968, soyez réaliste, demandez l'impossible. Be realistic. Ask for the impossible. When people ask me why we should do so, I answer in the words of President Kennedy's speech at Rice University in September of 1962, the speech in which he justifies his decision to put a man on the moon. When viewed as a metaphor, the speech is about much more than space travel. It inspires us to take on great technological challenges, like grid-level storage at the price point of the electricity market, or uh, electric vehicles competitive with internal combustion, or tonnage steel making without greenhouse gas emissions. To paraphrase my favorite line in that speech, and I'm taking some liberties here, we choose to work on the big problems not because it is easy, but because it is hard, because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills, because that challenge is one that we accept, that we are unwilling to postpone, and one that we intend to win. So graduates, congratulations. Let's get started.